Welcome to Manowaker Studios Flash Fiction Podcast. I'm CB Drogi. This week, The Mask by J.D. Byrne. Jonah couldn't sleep, not because he wasn't tired, far from it. There was the long flight, followed by the even longer cab ride. How is that even possible? Jonah wondered. Then three nightly sessions of reuniting with Catherine. They'd missed each other terribly in three weeks since she came to D.C. Catherine, however, had no problem going to sleep. Her head rested comfortably on Jonah's shoulder, arm draped across his chest, her breathing occasionally punctuated by an uneven snore. Even the city had gone to sleep, as the lights of the D.C. skyline had long since slipped into darkness. For Jonah, the problem was not restlessness, caffeine overdose, or the sugar-drenched chocolate explosion he and Catherine shared for dessert, although that didn't help. What was keeping Jonah awake was the mask, the mask that was inexplicably hung from the archway that demarcated the bedroom from the rest of Catherine's loft apartment. At first, Jonah didn't even notice the mask, until Catherine pointed it out proudly during a tour of her temporary home. It was to be part of the exhibit at the Smithsonian Institution she was working on, once anybody figured out what it was. Catherine was so taken by it that she convinced the curators to let her put it in the institution-furnished apartment to better study it. She could study it equally well at her station in the institution, of course. Catherine wanted it there simply because she thought it looked cool. Cool was not the first word that sprang to Jonah's mind when he laid eyes on the mask. Frightening was more like it. So was scary and seriously weird. One thing was clear. It involved snakes. Lots of snakes. Jonah hated snakes. He hated even more not being able to pinpoint the number of snakes involved. New ones seemed to spring up every time he looked at it, and now, as the mask glinted in the moonlight, some had disappeared. But Jonah knew they were still there. It freaked him out. In fact, he'd been well and truly freaked ever since he laid eyes on the mask. That first night, after dinner at a nearby Ethiopian restaurant and a long stroll through the neighborhood, Jonah and Catherine retired to the bedroom to reunite. Catherine excused herself to change behind a screen while Jonah climbed into bed. He fixated on the mask, wondering what sort of spirit possessed someone to make it. Was it a joke? The work of a lunatic? Laden with some deep religious meaning that Jonah's atheistic mind just couldn't grasp? He got so lost in these thoughts that he hadn't noticed Catherine emerge from behind the screen. It took a polite clearing of the throat from Catherine for Jonah to shift his gaze from the mask to her curvaceous frame and how seductively the new black silk negligee clung to her curves. In a playfully disappointed tone, Catherine asked, What on earth, Jonah, could be more important right now than your sexy girlfriend, whom you haven't seen in three weeks, parading around in her underwear? Sorry, honey, it's that mask. It just, Jonah shuddered, makes me nervous. Well, maybe I can take your mind off that mask for a while, huh? Catherine said as she slid into bed and wrapped her arms around him. The diversion that night, and the night after, and this night too, had only been temporary. Eventually, during the night, Jonah rolled over, woke up, and found himself face to face with the mask. This night was like the others. As Jonah sat up and wondered about the mask, something else did draw his attention. A noise, like a metallic rattle, coming through the front door. Jonah changed the target of his stare and looked toward the door. Thanks to a combination of moonlight and the light from next door shining through the kitchen, Jonah saw a crouched human form slowly creep into the apartment. As the form moved silently toward the living room and disappeared behind a divider, another sight caught Jonah's attention out of the corner of his right eye. It was the mask. More specifically, it was the snakes in the mask, and they were moving, slowly uncoiling from the mask. The snakes stretched forth like ghostly fingers into the night. If Jonah was freaked before, he was gripped with fright now. 
First a break-in and now some kind of poltergeist? Holy shit, Jonah thought. Paralyzed with fear, Jonah watched as the snake slowly turned around and dove underneath the mask, out under the archway. Jonah peered around the corner and saw the trail of snakes turn around the corner of a divider where the intruder had gone. He heard something drop, something heavy but not breakable, and heard the squeaky scurrying of tennis shoes on a bare wood floor. He saw the intruder fly out of the apartment, not even closing the door behind him. As Jonah struggled to process this turn of events, the snake silently drifted back into the bedroom and settled back into the mask. Still freaked, but no longer completely frightened, Jonah got up, closed the door, checked the lock and deadbolt. Then he went back to bed. Catherine lay there, mouth slightly open, arms splayed across the pillows. She snored gently, oblivious to the world around her. Jonah slid in beside her, slipping himself underneath one arm. He looked at the mask and then, for the first time in three days, went to sleep. This has been The Mask, written by J.D. Byrne, and originally published in The Last Arif and Other Stories. Flash Fiction Podcast is supported by Manowaker Studios' patrons on Patreon, the voluntary pay-what-you-want subscription service. To find out more or to become a patron, visit patreon.com slash manowaker. For more information about Manowaker Studios' other projects, including books and games, visit manowaker.com, which is also where you should go to learn more about the authors featured on this podcast or to get details about submitting a story. The Flash Fiction Podcast theme song is by Kevin McLeod. I'm C.B. Drogi. You can follow me on Twitter and Facebook at C-B-D-R-O-E-G-E. Thanks for listening.